Right, I had somebody ask me about backgrounding and um, the question was, the plea was, I can't get my background even. Um, okay, so, um, my first backgrounder and the one I pick up most often is um, the old 104, looks like that. Um, and I even go for the one with a sharp tip um, as well, mostly. So the, for me, this, the secret there is, um, first of all, not to really attempt to get it super, super, super even. So, but if you apply the principle of a jackhammer action, then you can get it fairly smooth. The other thing that I like to do is to move the tool around, not have it running in the same direction all the time. In that way, it gives you a homogeneous mix in the background, and nowhere do you get it very hit it very hard. And what you can also do then in this case. Um, is fade it out to nothing, so I tilt it ever so slightly and um, just hit it very, very lightly uh, so the heel is over the previously made background and the rest just fades it out to, to nothing. And I hit it very lightly, it's really not a hard hit. Um, so there is what I achieved with that backgrounder. Now obviously, um, let me show you if you have it as the background to a tooled uh, design. So what I need to do now is uh, I've got a cut a line there with a swivel knife. So now let me quickly bevel that. So let's say there's a design. Okay, so there's the beveled line. Now, the way I would do the background then uh, is in the following way. I would put the tool flat against the bevel and hit very definitely an impression. And in this way, I will do the whole side of the design. So you could see that it's one tool hit at a time. And by making sure that the tool is upright, not tilted, the, those, there's very little marks there and it's a fairly even affair. Now, if I have a large area to do, I can do the same as before. I showed you cover that area. And if you see one part standing up too much, then you tap it down a bit, and there we go. You, sometimes I only have, I want the, like that one background edge there, and then I want it faded out. So then I would do the same fading as I showed you before, and just fade it out from there to nothing. There we go. One thing also to remember is that you are looking at your work in micro. You are right with your face into it. It's in your face and you see every small little horrible detail and it looks to you as though it's not very even at all. Um, but somebody else that sees this as part of a design, um, there we go. Now. I must also uh, repeat that I am not a perfectionist. Haha, <laughs> so I have license not to be perfect. And um, if you're a perfectionist, then you can apply to what I tell you and just add practice to that. Lots and lots and lots of practice. That will help.
I have another um, really nice um, backgrounder. Um, this one was part of a four tool set um, and its number is E was it E or L? No, E294. E294 was a whole set. This one is 04. It's the smallest one. And um, let me show you this way. That's what it looks like. Also a very nice one to um, get just a dappled and dotted background. There you go. Um, and you'll see that um, obviously the larger area you cover like that, the more even it will actually look. So the other thing that you can do that I like is, um, and this is a very fine little tool with a very fine pattern. If you compare it to the other one, it's a much, much finer pattern. So what you can also do is first roughly cover your area with the tool. And you'll see in this case, I'm not being very careful that it comes out very even at all in this case. Then what I do more deliberately I take this tool and I put it down and I tilt it slightly. So like that, I tilt it slightly so that I have a definite impression. And now I try and do them at random as much as I can. And now any unevenness you had before will not be noticed at all. It is all covered up by quite a nice background effect. Um, and you can do this with a lot of tools. Um, any one of those will uh, have exactly the same effect um, as that. So there's a, that's a, uh, probably a bit of a cheating way of, of doing the backgrounding um, and getting it deliberately not even. But, um, hey, as long as the after effect is nice, and as long as you have fun in the process, uh, that's most important. Okay. So, just get the leather damp again. Um, I took out, there is um, another, another one. This is quite an aggressive uh, backgrounder, yo, um, its number is 888, triple eight, so it is much more aggressive, as you can see there, a very definite uh, background effect, so here again, just repeating it all over, And there you go, with quite a nice background done there. Okay, what else did I took out? I took out something else to show you. Um, and this is just a, a very fun background. Uh, I call it, I think the originator also called it a faux frog skin, uh, false frog skin. Um, and it's attributed, I learned it first from um, the then chairman of the South African Leather Guild, Tommy McClintock, he showed this to us, um, whether he saw it somewhere or that, I don't know, but he showed this to us in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, so here go, what I have, I have three cedars of different size. three guys there and you can mix them up make smaller and that I decided to go with those three 
Okay, so what you do, you start with a big one, and you can vary the effects as well with these. So what I do is I um, do these big ones side by side. might even branch them out and I kind of try not to have too big a gaps between them so for all the South African guys that see this I learned this one in South Africa okay then um, I fill in gaps between with the next size down and I do as much as I can with that. But obviously, there'll be some gaps staying open. Now, this looks like a very laborious way to cover a background. But let me tell you that you can do a background fairly fast like this, um, very successfully goes much faster than what your imagination is telling you. Okay, so then um, I take a smaller one um, and you can, I mean, you can go really down, but small, I then fill in any gaps that can still be done with a small guy. There we go. And now, the secret of this one, I'm going to take an even smaller cedar. I see there's some really small gaps in there. Put a few very small ones in. Just for fun. You can vary these any way you like. Okay, so there it is now. I'll tell you the big secret behind this one I found is it's okay. It looks good. It will be quite acceptable as it is as a background, but to make it slightly more acceptable, I uh, uh, take an extra step and I redo every one of the very big ones. Only the big ones you don't have to do them all, but I do the very big ones. Just redo them all. Because they kind of get squashed up in the process. And by redoing them, you burnish them up a bit. Um, they get reshaped and they just stand out much better. Uh, they seem to take the impression better as well the second time around and there we go all right then that's it and if i back up a bit there you can see very nice uh, background done there now you can fill up big areas like that very fast don't be scared of that okay so there is that and then remember you can do backgrounding with virtually any two um, I suppose anyone let's uh, take a camouflage tool for example that's what it looks like everybody knows the camouflage tool now if you just repeat that Again, at random, no fixed pattern or anything like that. Just try and fill any open gap. There we go. And there is that one. And You'll see if you have this at a, of a background, um, 
of a project, then it will kind of disappear as well. You, these backgrounds won't stand out. Remember now, looking at them very individually, um, like this one, is um, is really small detail. My camera is very very close. Um, so if uh, for comparison I can show you my finger, it's a very fine small pattern. So there we go. Okay, now obviously the more formal floral carving has the bar grounders that they use or something like that um, for their backgrounds, uh, very formally and all those. This is just backgrounding for fun. Just backgrounding, get it successful the first time around. Um, and you don't have to stress about getting it a lot, uh, qu uh, quite even. Um, unless, as I said, you're afflicted with perfectionism. Okay, I hope um, it was good uh, for you. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Um, I will try and post a photograph of this in the comments as well. Um, there we go. Take care and have fun.